Thank you so much, Thank Mr. You. Srinivas. Um, absolute pleasure actually to be here in um, BCD's newest manufacturing plant. Um, it's actually been built and created in a very unique way, very interesting and in an innovative way as well. Um, can we start off, of course we'll come to the plant, but can we start off with the hero of the day, which is the iShare Pro X series. Um, how important do you think this product is for your company, given the <coughs> fact that it's a completely new foray into the SCV space, um, it's an electric product as well. How important is this for you? Uh, see, it is important uh, for several reasons and uh, for yeah. Bhopal uh, specific and uh, and also otherwise. And first is let us come in the business uh, point of view. So, um, Aishra has been in the light and medium duty space, heavy duty trucks and buses. Now, this gives us an opportunity to cover an industry which is almost uh, 250,000 uh, trucks. So, there is a great opportunity for us to be there. And also, uh, this segment is has a close proximity with the uh, light and medium duty trucks. So, and uh, large part of it is the owner driven market and while it is a B2B, the customer is uh, directly going to use this uh, truck. So, that gives us a lot of opportunity for us and uh, we can also catch customers young actually. So, this can, can be future potential for us in uh, light and medium duty going forward. So, that way this segment is very important for us. And uh, coming to Bhopal perspective, yes, I think this plant is our uh, light duty trucks plant and a small commercial vehicle plant. And uh, this plant, one of the main reasons of setting up plant is uh, to get into this segment. So, to that extent, it is quite important for us uh, to be in this segment. Yeah, so now we come to the plant itself. I mean, uh, for a company, as a company, it's a very important foray into the small commercial vehicle space. A new plant came up during COVID but absolutely state of the art. So, how proud of you are you of setting up something like this? See, I think uh, as a any person for that matter, as a manufacturing or in a sales person, you have some way of going for a best practices in the current uh, set of uh, things and you have certain uh, limitations because you carry uh, the historically some of the things and you keep upgrading them with the time. But when you get an opportunity of a greenfield project, you can execute a lot of things which probably may not be easier to execute in, in a running operations also. There are certain challenges to revamp uh, in a running plant. So, then there are plenty, plenty of opportunities in a greenfield project. So, uh, some of these things are there historically in our minds and few things we actually listed out when we conceptualize this plant and we try to incorporate as much as we can in this plant. Uh, give an example to you whether it is uh, the uh, industry 4.0 practices, IoT, integration of uh, some of the digital practices or digitalization practices uh, in the plant, in the assembly line and also integration with uh, the co-located suppliers, co-located warehouses and bringing diversity in the plant. For example, uh, the women workforce, uh, like several things. And also, uh, we had an opportunity, like for example, in the past when we were setting up plants, we were setting up with uh, uh, some limited options of fuels. Today, this plant can serve uh, diesel, this plant can serve CNG, this plant can serve EVs. So, a lot of flexibility we could accommodate uh, in this plant. Right. Um, can you also give us a, a snapshot on what are the range of products that roll out of this plant? and what is the capacity that you have installed and probably what scope for expansion as well. So, uh, currently uh, you can broadly divide uh, this plant into um, two different ways. One is a small commercial vehicle and uh, currently it is around 40,000 vehicles which it can uh, scalable to maybe another 40,000 vehicles as an opportunity available here. And uh, light and medium duty uh, space, we are uh, making our Pro 2000 series here. Which is uh, which has an opportunity of another forty thousand vehicles here, right? And um, you spoke about certain highlights, right? Industry four point oh. Let's talk a bit more on that. We walked through the plant. It was really amazing to see, you know, the lines functioning only with robotics as well. What what are the unique features of Industry four point oh? How does it improve your manufacturing efficiency? Uh, first is uh, the extensive use of uh, the digitization practices on the line and uh, the, uh, the manufacturing excellence by leveraging uh, the opportunities from the software side and other things. So, most of these uh, uh, processes are uh, linked to each other. Like for example, if I am a customer, actually I can 
very quickly trace back which line or which uh, stage that actually that operation is conducted and who is the operator at what time this operation was done and what are the uh, the the go and no go uh, is is there on the line and also uh, each uh, stage speaks to other stages unless the requirements of operation 1 is fulfilled i think it will actually not allow you to move to the another operation and uh, more or less i think your entire uh, the data is available to you so that data can be extensively used and in several ways one uh, during the customer uh, uses you can link it with uh, your operational excellence with the customer uses in case of any problem you can trace back and you can improve yourself this entire data can be used even future product development also you know what is the right way of using it and the other third uh, use case is we are also linking it with the suppliers there are suppliers who are supplying us parts and there are suppliers who are supplying us aggregates then there onwards the entire history of a vehicle can be actually retained with us right couple of other aspects which are very very you know standing stand out uh, aspects is the linear uh, line the assembly line and also probably a couple of notches beyond just in time the just in sequence uh, right. approach right can you throw us a bit more light on uh, so what you said i think all of us are quite familiar with uh, just in time and uh, this plant uh, we don't have a warehouse here and we planned a warehouse outside it is an outsourced uh, opportunity and uh, from there uh, there is a set of kitting done and parts are uh, supplied in uh, just in time to large extent just in sequence but coming back to your just in sequence we have a lot of aggregates produced outside so these these uh, assemblies are supplied uh, in uh, just in sequence the moment we decide a sequence for a day a sequence for 3 days or 7 days the same sequence is uh, displayed in the monitors of the our supplier chain partners so they also prepare uh, their raw material or their assemblies their sequence and they supply in the same sequence so it is a true sense of uh, synchronization of the all efforts so it will help in several uh, ways one is uh, the inventory management it's not a just an inventory management in your plant it is an inventory management at your supplier and their tier to suppliers so the entire thing can be streamlined uh, next is the capacity alignment like for example your plant is operating at a certain level for example it operating at 100 vehicles per day your entire uh, supplier base and the aggregates also can be aligned with the same uh, pace so i think there will be better utilization of all the plants and you can say the overall uh, uh, prosperity to everyone involved in the uh, value chain fantastic fantastic right few words on gender diversity and inclusivity i mean the asia pro x uh, is rolling off a, a line that is handled only by women few words on that how important is that aspect and also what does it talk about the ease of manufacturing an asia product that's very important as well uh, gender diversity brings uh, several things on uh, plate one is uh, the way they take care of these vehicles you know i think when i talk to them they said that uh, it is almost like their child you know I, I, they said that even though they are angles i see uh, what they were saying is uh, the way they approach to an assembly to all fairness to the uh, the the men but i think uh, there is a bit of a empathy in their way of uh, handling things and uh, uh, it, it is like a, is a more like a car like feeling i think one can see then the things are managed on the line so that is one way of looking into things um, uh, the second important thing is when you are planning for something for something which has to be uh, uh, have a lesser fatigue for the people on the line so um, one has to apply a lot of engineering to it so our manufacturing engineering people have to spend lot of time and energy to make sure that uh, the women can produce very easily on the line so that actually gives us a good challenge and also at the same time we can actually give a line which is you can say large extent fatigue free and also uh, given an opportunity to work on other areas like quality productivity uh, in 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 kind of an automation so all that opportunities were emerged so when this thought has started uh, the diversity women uh, producing the trucks it started that uh, to bring a difference to the way it is manufactured but however it got extended to the manufacturing uh, engineering and bringing a lot of new age concepts to the uh, place when we started benchmarking with the global plants brilliant you touched upon automation right india traditionally is known you know for its labor intensive and low cost labor operations as well right but this seems to be highly automated plant right what is the level of automation in the plant 
and why do you think that is necessary especially when you have labor available at you know affordable prices see globally automation is done for uh, reasons like quality cost and uh, uh, maybe reducing the labor and other things is could be one of the reason and fatigue but however we think ours is a frugal automation it is a combination of uh, productivity quality and fatigue reduction at the same time it will not impact the the, the job of the human being so it it will integrate uh, the human being at the same time uh, there will be an automation which is required to give the quality productivity and reduction of fatigue and I, that is the reason i call it as a frugal automation which suits to india and which is a which india will become a niche for this and also uh, india has big two big advantages one we have the enough uh, um, uh, availability of the competent people second is uh, the availability of lot of uh, uh, software uh, people people who can provide software services to us startups who are there in this manufacturing uh, side so combination of all these three we can give a excellent frugal automated solution which india can brand itself and probably we are the first to use all those services right right so zooming out a bit from this frugal automation the right. terminology that you used it suits well to the two partners in the vecb joint right. venture aishar known for frugal engineering frugal manufacturing volvo with their own unique volvo production system what kind of a transformation do you think this has brought to not just the indian cv industry but to manufacturing overall in the indian market uh, when we started uh, working with our uh, global partners and uh, when we talk about automation some of the solutions which were uh, generated here actually they were uh, very very uh, economical and uh, frugal in nature they can be used globally by several others in the manufacturing space so it is also encouraged uh, the indian uh, startup mindset Uh, with a combination of uh, the emerging trends in the in the digital space and combining that uh, it is a great opportunity like whatsoever we thought that a very expensive uh, proposition to make it on a line uh, actually was converted into a very economical and affordable uh, automation uh, at the same time and india has a biggest advantage is scale Uh, we have that uh, volumes and scale available uh, in uh, india and uh, with this kind of uh, small commercial vehicles that can be leveraged uh, globally at several places right and since you handle the operations you probably the right person to give us an indication or an idea where do you think india ranks as far as manufacturing comes globally in different parameters if you have to have an overall ranking where would you put and what is the gap that still needs to be bridged where do you think we should improve uh i think uh, if you talk about uh, the entire uh, system i think you start with uh, the suppliers and the manufacturing line and uh, the way we uh, what you call con- meet the conformities of the to the products what we make so if you ask about in automotive space uh, the suppliers uh, actually has reached to a very good level for example because they are not just suppliers to us they are supplying to all the global companies and the product supplied to them to us these products are also in turn exported to the global markets mm-hmm. consequent to that most of the our uh, development process whether you call it as a apqp or the ppap or the development process various process are aligned with best of the global practices to large extent i think uh, we are there as far as the supply chain is concerned in, f- in terms of product development process when these products are developed and when you uh, envisage new products when you go for a uh, the development process like for example we use the the volvo's process of uh, gdp process so all these processes are to large extent same come to manufacturing uh, i think uh, when you are uh, coming up with the new age plants the gap has reduced substantially i feel that uh, i think we are there uh, where these global organizations are there today i think uh, we are uh, we are geared up to meet the global requirements uh, i can see that uh, uh, there is hardly any gap left out with the global manufacturing practices it's wonderful to hear i mean brilliant right anything else beyond this that you would like to add mr uh, i uh, this product is actually made uh, as discussing with you start from uh, understanding the unmet needs of the customer what i call it is a latent needs of the customer and uh, uh, work with him it is a co-created and the f- first level when the designs are made it is actually worked very closely with the customers then the first prototypes are made worked with the customer then the parts are developed and these plants are made 
to suit the EV applications and lot of things are integrated well in advance. It is not the makeshift arrangement, it is the ground up development for the electric trucks and a lot of work is done in, the, in terms of validation. So I am very strongly feel it is an opportunity to empower the Indian customers to get into new age solutions. I am very sure uh, it is quite uh, prosperous for everyone who are involved in the system. Wonderful sir, thank you very much. Thank you.